This is the furthest any explorer has gone without the lifeline of supplies. We push even more into the unknown. I have heard reports of our ships attacked by some civilized race. We have yet to encounter anything or anyone other than the wild beasts and savages. Enter. Is this about the matter of the storm? Aye, Captain. The lad's very capable, but a good way for him to learn is for him to have a go at it. Very well. Make it so. Phineas? Are you sure you want the lad up there? I fear this is a fierce storm. One to make even a seasoned man shake in his boots. One thing I must agree on, the lad has an eye for altitudes. There's a storm coming, and a water twister in this wake. Christ, what a storm. the sails, fasten the gunwales, and hard to port side. Science officer, I need your assessment. Phineas, get the steam crew below decks. Captain, by my calculations, we can inflate the dirigible in time, fly over the storm, but we must cast off some of the cargo, the heavy ones, that is. Very well, make it so. Well, I best be going below decks to better calculate how fast we need to go. Adwin, make haste. Come down to the hold and strap yourself down. This is no time for a lad to be on deck. Yes, sir. Keep your wits about. We cannot afford to lose more men. Silas! Silas! Damn. Cast off the masts and raise the air sack. Phineas, get a reading on our bearings. The twist of the show to disorient us. All of 13 years and lost in the wilderness. Lost. Yet, in my heart, I feel he walks this earth still. Oh, I now think of those moments when I spoke a stern word and handed down a penalty for his mischiefs. Oh God, I would gladly parlay a thousand of those for a chance to have him in my arms again. He was a delight to the crew, kept us in good spirits throughout our journey. I saw in him my late brother, courageous, headstrong, yet he was filled with a wisdom that many of his age do not possess. Why on earth did I think that this would be the adventure of a lifetime for one so young? Ariana, my heart bleeds. I've been on a thousand voyages and faced many perils. Yet why did I think that such peril would not, could not befall us? And now, my nephew is missing, perhaps gone from this earth. I wish it was me that was lost that night. 
It is the curse of my bloodline to be restless in the comfort of home, yearning for voyage, for discomfort, for strange inhospitable lands and the company of savages. O oh, Ariana, will you find mercy in your heart for me? And he does not even know that I am his uncle. Phineas, it is not your burden to bear. Your brother's blood courses through his vein. The call of adventure beckoned him. He would have withered here. He would have despised his life here, and perhaps even me. He did what he loved most. But would that he had stayed longer to experience the love of a woman, the thrill of finding the other joys of life. Yet I keep thinking, would one more season to have taken the role of the lookout? My years as a navigator and explorer are all for naught if he cannot be located. I swear to you that if he walks this earth yet, I shall find him. Yes, Phineas, you must find him. For my heart is torn between granting you mercy and taking my husband's sword and running you through. You filled Edwin's head with all this nonsense about adventure. Now I must leave, join in the search, for I cannot sleep another wink, nor abide the comforts of home without knowing what befell him. For his steadfastness, courage, and exceptional navigational skills, I recommend that the Royal Geographic Society promote Phineas Acknesson to Captain of the Sojourner. With the discovery of the uncharted land, we have much to learn and many lands to explore. These are exciting times, yet peril awaits with each breath. The uncharted lands have shown us civilizations beyond our imagination, with devices and automatons beyond our comprehension. I know of no better leader of men, and no one more tenacious an explorer than Phineas. Very well, dear Ariana. You certainly have the credentials, but I warn you, the life of the explorer is not one of comfort. But I suppose you know that already. Come morrow, you shall be assigned science officer aboard the Sojourner. Now, under the command of your brother-in-law, Captain Phineas Agnussen. It's been ten days and we're almost out of food. Sals has been reluctant to explore the jungle, fearing unnamed bees we hear growling at night. We have been fortunate that the provisions cast off the ship washed ashore. Natives, will they get us? Let's go! Come on! Edwin, let me take the gun. Grab a sword and make for the woods. I'll fend them off as best I can. Yes, yes! Take that, you coconut-eating, flea-hosting, and I might add, ugly savages. Oh, shit. They outflanked us. Pale, pale! We have wondrous gifts for you. You fools! Is that the best you can do? <laughs> Damn it! 